probably spend a little time going over the types of projects that we get involved with and our, a little bit of our history, and then we'll take a, a walk through the plant and across the snow and the cold. Um, first of all, we'll see if anybody has done any homework here, that um, one of our predecessor companies was Medford Concrete Construction, and where the mall is, if you will, actually where the Toyota store is now is where Medford Concrete Construction started many years ago. So the first test is how old is the oldest predecessor company to Medford Fabrication? Any guess? 1930. 1930. Earlier. Wow. Yeah. 1920. Earlier. 1907. 1910. 1910. Yeah, 1910? Wow. Great. You win. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of fun, as you know, as, as you're yeah. watching and reading the Metro Mail Tribune now, they're basically going on uh, organizations that have been, what, what was happening in Medford 100 years ago, and 100 years ago, uh, Medford Concrete Construction was formed over on Riverside and McAndrews. Um, one of the interesting things is when we sold that property, uh, originally, to some of the people that were involved with the Rogue Valley Mall, because originally there's going to be a movie theater there, not a lithia store. Um, you can imagine how much fun it was to try and get a clear title on a piece of property dating from 1910 that called the middle of Bear Creek as your property line. <laughs> because at that time, or actually in the late 50s, as you probably know, uh, surprise, surprise, uh, when we built stuff, if we wanted to move it, we just moved it. So we moved Bear Creek to build I-5. So anyway, we finally got a clear title. Uh, we got paid off, which was great. Um, but again, uh, it was, it's interesting. I still have the corporate minutes from that organization. And again, it reads based on some of the cycles of the economy that we all go through that they would normally come together, declare a dividend, and go home. But during the 1930s, things got a lot quieter. <laughs> Um, and then, basically, one of the probably the, you know one of the major changes in our valley was in the early 1940s when Camp White was being constructed. And to a certain degree, um, this is a family story about the Thorndikes. And if you would like a copy, my dad wrote a nice history of, of our company, and he dates his involvement back to 1942 when the uh, Trumix partnership was put together. And Trumix, of course, was one of the predecessors to LTM and Knife River, etc. And it was basically put together, and my father's first job with the company was opening bags of cement. We had a batch plant right out by Roxy Ann where the rifle range was. And you can imagine what an impact building that camp had on our valley. And my dad quickly realized after a summer of opening 50-pound uh, bags of cement that he wanted to go to Oregon Agricultural College and be a beaver, which he did. Um, our family, again, became involved in a lot of different companies in the valley because my grandfather uh, was a banker with First National Bank here, but he was also an entrepreneur and he knew that he couldn't be a good banker unless he knew what it meant to be in, in that type of business. So during his life, he invested in everything from peach orchards to uh, sawmills to luckily low-cost um, stumpage up on the Green Springs, uh, construction companies, steel fabrication companies. Now my grandfather couldn't take an active role in any of those organizations because he was also banking them, but he was a wonderful, uh, he, he, he could judge a person's character almost immediately. and so. He really helped a lot of local companies, as consultants do today, in trying to make sure you have the right team of people together. So after the war, my dad came back. Um, like all good Thorndikes, we take enough accounting that we could do something useful. And my dad was doing the books um, out of Sawmill, Medford Steel, Trumix, etc. And we had all this fragmented ownership in the valley where all these companies got started people put a few dollars in to get them going. Uh, by this time, my father really liked the fabricated steel business. And so his the original concept was to trade our stock in Trumix for our stock in Medford Steel. Um, but 
as you were going into the 1950s, you had people, you had liquidity questions as to how could a person get their money out of their investment if their kids didn't want to go on or if the person passed away and the spouse needed the income. And so we came up with this idea in 1961 of forming a little mini conglomerate right here in Medford, Oregon. And so the second question is, um, we still use the holding company name of CSC Inc. But what did CSC Inc. originally stand for? Concrete Steel and... Incorporated. Very good. So you get your choice of a shirt. <laughs> couple sizes there for you. Okay. Good job. So Concrete Steel Corporation was a, uh, a way to get people to be able to um, uh, sell their stock. Um, our family had control. Another family, the Stewart family, who had been one of the original investors in Trumex, was the other major investor. And then there were a number of smaller stockholders. So we ran that for about 10 years. Growing up as a kid, at the time, we had seven unions <laughs> between the construction companies and the steel fabrication. And I remember basically all my dad did was negotiate labor contracts. Uh, by 1972, um, it was decided between Leinegers and Trumix that neither one of us really had the size to be able. So anytime you had a really good job in the valley, you know, you get those people from Eugene or San Francisco or Reading coming up who had the bonding authority. And so we spun off uh, Trumix at the time to Bob Stewart, who then in turn sold it to Dick Hensley and Colin Larson and, and, and the rest. And so they went off and LTM is, you know, Trumix and then LTM and now Knife River, uh, again, a great asset for our community. I think looking back over the time, anytime Trumix had a good year, Medford Steel had a terrible year. <laughs> so it actually has worked out much better that we're separated today. So uh, our family then had complete control in 1972 um, of CSC Inc. We kept CSC Inc. because we had a partnership at the time building the uh, fish hatchery up at Lost Creek. And so we had a joint venture where we were still involved in a little bit of construction. So we kept that as our holding name. And then we had basically three operating companies. We had a company called MedFab, where I was sent, and when I graduated from college, uh, out in White City, which was a uh, facility that we built wigwam burners in and electro cases for the Hannah Nickel mine. We had Medford Steel, and we had Medford Blowpipe, which is an industrial sheet metal shop. From 1972 to today, we basically collapsed those three organizations into one that we call Medford Fabrication. And so we do business as Medford Fabrication. Our holding company is CSC Inc. My father was kind enough um, and trusting enough to basically uh, gift the company uh, to my two brothers and myself. So each of us own a third of Medford Fabrication. So what does Medford Fabrication do today? Why would you want to walk through a a big cold warehouse. Well, <laughs> when you think of it, um, in the 1940s, there was a need for fabricated steel in our valley. Originally, uh, Medford Steel started building the tanks that you see at the different jobbers, at, at the oil wholesalers and stuff. But there started, you know, there was a there's tremendous growth going on in our community. We were building the dams on the Emqua, on the Klamath. You had the Hannah. Uh, nickel smelter up in Riddle. You had hundreds of sawmills and stuff. And they needed fabricated steel. And so basically what Metric Fabrication did even at that time was adapt to what was needed in our community and meeting people's different needs. And we've built on that ever since. I think one of the reasons we're still here today is we don't get overly excited about any specific thing we ever build because we know that things go through cycles and that there are times where we are very busy. And again, we've run up to 200 employees at this plant. We're down now at 30. Um, we can scale up to around $20 million in sales, down to $5 million in sales. And I think it's an inherent advantage that my grandfather and my father instilled in us of growing the company very conservatively so that as you go through these cycles, you can adapt to what's going on. 
we built some amazing things. I've had the privilege of building some amazing things uh, during my career of 34 years. Even though we also say that there's nothing better than fabricated metal for a holiday present. So, <laughs> if you see anything out there you like, let me know. But, you know, some of the things that we're getting involved in today, though, I think are incredible in that because of our geographic location. One, it's nice to be midway on the, on the west coast. So again, if people are looking for something to have built on the west this is where we have to pick up the exhaust gas coming off that dryer. Because that exhaust gas, compared to when a lot of us were growing up as kids and saw the blue haze going off of the veneer dryers, Boise brings all of that into a very highly sophisticated pollution control piece of equipment. That's a five foot diameter pipe and we're 250 feet out here, and so we basically made these in eight foot pieces, and our people had to roll them along and then up, and then actually bring them up into the air. It's interesting that this is now all covered with insulation, but we, before we co covered it with insulation, just the heat of the day would cause that pipe to expand or contract.